Welcome back to the workshop, gentlemen. In this video, I need to make a pod to hold the Android Auto touchscreen, as well as all of the cameras. I've got thermal, infrared, fisheye, and other passive infrared motion sensors that I want to install in pods on the outside of the truck, as well as I got a pair of these uh, infrared floodlights. While they do have glass, windows and the modules and the drivers aren't bad the enclosure is super janky and not using it so let's 3d print some parts need a 3d printer sweetheart i was thinking i should get a 3d printer but all the all the famous YouTube stars have one. But it's my birthday. So after considering all the printer's costs, features, availability, and most importantly to me, online community support. I decided to go with the Creality CR10S. And while I don't want to make this into a 3D printing how-to video, I do want to quickly touch on a few key details. Uh, these pods are going to need to be super strong, UV stable, and be able to stand up to the temperatures of a truck cab. And for that, we need to be able to print with ABS or ASA. PLA filament is much easier to print because you can print at much lower temperatures but this would be a non-starter for outdoor use as it is biodegradable and will break down in sunlight. So to print ASA, you need to print at higher temperatures and to maintain that, I've built this styrofoam enclosure box uh, out of just blue styrofoam sheet and then placed a two foot square, 250 watt ceramic heater uh, underneath the printer and that's temperature controlled by a thermostat to hold 60 degrees. So basically, once I close the door, it's like a giant man-size easy bake oven. And boom, just like that I was printing parts like a crazy man. The first few weeks I was printing uh, parts non-stop day and night, mostly just small but useful knickknacks like this uh, holder for GoPros. And I was mostly just trying to learn the materials and get the settings dialed in. I even printed this subscribe error desk ornament for Levi Allen's channel Left Coast. I just grabbed his bear logo from his YouTube header and remodeled it into a 3D object and then printed it out. It even has a Wemos Wi-Fi module embedded in its base and a tiny OLED screen that updates with his live subscriber count. Thankfully it arrived there just in time for his 50,000th subscriber. If you're interested in seeing that, check that out here. Anyway, once I had all that tomfoolery out of my system, I jumped right into the CAD software and 3D modeled all the cameras and sensors and other components that we'd be using. And that way I can design the pods to perfectly hold them all. And these are the designs I came up with. I shaped the outer shells to have our trademark low polygon stealth fighter look, and then added some useless vents and grooves and numbers just for extra style points. I think they have the right je ne sais quoi matching the rest of the truck style pretty well. Then I could finally get to printing them. Well, that's where everything went pear-shaped. Even though I'd been printing ASA without any issues for weeks, these were all small parts that printed within half an hour or an hour. And when I started printing larger parts, they, they were taking 10, 30, or 50 hours to finish. The filament would jam halfway through the night and it was really hard to diagnose because I couldn't sit there and watch it that long. So while this machine does have a filament run out detection sensor, it wouldn't trip because the filament wasn't running out. And so it would just sit there stripping, spinning the gear on the filament. I even went as far as building this pinwheel sensor that monitors the filament's consumption. And if the filament stops moving, it will simulate a filament runout condition and pause the print. There are many causes for this. Uh, some of the original components on the printer were made of plastic and they were spring loaded and inside the hot chamber, they started deforming with the heat. And so I made and replaced parts of these with aluminum. 
and then layer height became suspect because of the number of steps of the stepper motor multiplied by the pitch of the lead screw, which needed to be equally divisible by the layer height. So I fought with jammed nozzles, extrusion multipliers, retraction settings, and then I'd think, there, I got it, perfect. And then 22 hours later, <laughs> failed print. But like I said, this isn't gonna be a how to 3D print video. I did manage to stumble my way through getting the parts printed, and this is how they look coming straight off of the printer. There's a little bit of layer lines you can see, but they sand off and it's actually a lot worse on camera than it actually is. So after a quick sanding and a grunge paint job, this is how they look. You'll notice the large one for the front has the uh, IR floodlights, a uh, motion detector here, a PIR motion sensor, as well as the three cameras. And this is a motorized cover to protect the camera when we're in thick bug country or otherwise need it covered. Okay, and lastly is the pod for the Android Auto touchscreen display. Uh, the front section comes off and it has four holes here, which interface to the original four factory mounting points on the display itself. So that'll be fastened securely there. And then this plate has four of these ears, which will have nuts embedded in them. And they line up. looking right here. They line up with the holes along the side here uh, to fasten that in. And this curve of course matches the curve of the roof of our vehicle. And I think this has a nice uh, organic curves that is, is more suiting to the original style of our truck interior. It does need some finishing. Uh, I've just sanded it real quick, but uh, these lines you see here they look, I can't really even see them that well. They, they do seem worse on camera than they actually are. Okay, so that's all well and good, but I can't install any of this until I get the camper box put back onto the truck. So without further ado, queue up box onto truck montage. <laughs> 